In this section, we will discuss some of the algebraic properties of matrix operations. We will see that many of the basic rules of arithmetic for real numbers hold for our matrices, but we will also see that some do not. Here are some of the algebraic properties of matrix operations that are also true for real numbers. First, we have the commutativity. This is saying that if we add two matrices, the order does not matter. Second, matrix addition is also associative, meaning to say it doesn't matter where you start your addition. You will still get the same answer. So hence, just like with real numbers, we will just write A plus B plus C as A plus B plus C. Next, we have associativity of scalar multiplication. A and B here are scalar, so therefore, the product AB is a scalar. Whereas C here is a matrix, this is the same as having the matrix BC. This is a matrix, right? Because B is a scalar and C is a matrix. This is a matrix and then you multiply that with your scalar A. Next, we have the distributive property. We have the sum of two matrices B and C. When you multiply it with a scalar, that is the same as multiplying the scalar with the first term and then adding that with the scalar multiple of the second term. And this one also is its distributive property. Take note here, class, that this plus here is matrix multiplication, whereas this plus that occurs here is scalar, scalar addition, all right? Because here you're adding two numbers, whereas here you are adding two matrices. Next, we are going to talk about the zero matrix. It is a matrix whose entries are all zero. So here are some examples of a zero matrix. We will denote a zero matrix by this bold zero just to denote that it is a matrix and that it is not the zero real number, all right? Unless it is important to specify its size, we will use this notation. However, if we want to denote its size, we will use this notation, 0mn. Here are some of the properties of the zero matrix. First is that if you have any matrix A, and then you add it with the zero matrix, you will just get the same matrix A, correct? And A, when you add it with its negative, of course, you will get the zero matrix. And lastly, the zero, this is the scalar zero, whereas this is the zero matrix. The zero scalar multiplied with your matrix A, of course, will give you the zero matrix. Take note that these ones have their counterparts in real numbers. Take note that if A is a real number, we know that the number A plus 0 is equal to A. A plus negative A is equal to 0. And of course, 0 times A is equal to 0. Moreover, we have this property. If C times A is equal to 0, if the scalar multiple is equal to the 0 matrix, then that would mean that either the scalar is equal to 0, this is the 0 real number, or the matrix that we started with originally is the 0 matrix. Again, this one has a counterpart for real numbers, correct? Because for real numbers, if we have C times A is equal to 0, then C is equal to 0 or A is equal to 0. For real numbers, if the product of two numbers is equal to 0, that means that one of them, at least one of them, must be equal to 0. Let us look at the properties of matrix multiplication. First, matrix multiplication is also associative. Next, this is matrix addition, this is matrix multiplication, 
matrix multiplication is distributive over matrix addition. And this one also, just the same. Next, here, it doesn't matter where the parentheses are. You can simply pull out the scalar. Take note also that these properties here have their corresponding real number versions. Let us verify that matrix multiplication is indeed associative. Let us compute A times quantity B times C. First, let us compute for BC. BC is equal to negative 1 times 3, negative 3, plus 1 times 1, so that's negative 2. For the 2, 1, and 3, this times this, second row times first column is 0 times 3, plus 2 times 1 is 2. We now multiply this value that we obtained by A on the left. This is equal to first row times first column is negative 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Next, let us compute. Next, let us compute for AB first. AB is equal to for the 1, 1, and 3. First row times first column we get negative 1. 1, 2, and 3 is first row times second column, we get 1. 2, 1, and 3 is second row times first column, and that is 1. 2, 2, and 3 is second row times second column is negative 1 plus 2 is 1. We now multiply this with C, and this is equal to first row times this column is negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And then this row times this column is 3 plus 1 is 4. Correct. They are equal, which should be the case. One property of real numbers, which is not true for matrices, is that Matrix multiplication is not commutative. For real numbers, we know that the product AB is always equal to BA. The order does not matter for real numbers. However, for matrices, it is possible that the product AB is not the same as BA. When will this happen? First, AB may be defined and BA may not. Let's say A is 2 by 3 and B is 3 by 1. So therefore, AB is defined. AB will be a 2 by 1 matrix. However, for BA, BA is not defined because B is 3 by 1, whereas A is 2 by 3. These values here are not the same. So therefore, BA is not defined. Next, it's possible that A, B, and B, A may be both defined, but they may have different sizes. When will that happen? Suppose A is 2 by 3 and B is 3 by 2. If that is the case, A, B would have size 2 by 2. However, for B, A, we have 3 by 2 multiplied with a 2 by 3 matrix and that means BA is of size 3 by 3. Just by looking at the sizes, AB and BA cannot be equal because they have different sizes. And lastly, AB and BA may both be defined and have the same size but the two products may still be different. We are going to see an example of this in the next slide. Let us verify that A, B, and B, A are not equal for these two matrices. First, let us compute the product A, B. The 1, 1, and 3 is negative 1 times 2 
plus 3 times 0, that's negative 2. The 1, 2, and 3 is 1 first row times second column, that is 1 plus 6, that's 8. Next, the 2, 1, and 3 is 2 times 2 plus negative 1 times 0, that is 4. And lastly, the 2, 2, and 3 is second row times second column, so that's negative 2 plus negative 2. That's negative 4. Let's look at BA. For BA, we have 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Actually, if we stop here, we can now say that AB and BA are not the same because their 1, 1, and 3s are not equal. However, let us still complete the entries of BA. The 2, 1 entry is 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1, that is 7, and then the 2, 1, and 3 is 4, this is negative 2. So indeed, AB is not equal to BA. Here is an example of two matrices where the products AB is the same as AC, but B is not equal to C. Let us verify that AB is equal to AC. The 1, 1, and 3 is positive 3 plus 6 is 9. 1, 2, and 3 is negative 6 minus 4. That's negative 10. The 2, 1, and 3 is 6 plus 12, 18. And the 2, 2, and 3 is negative 12 minus 8. That is negative 20. And then for AC, the 1, 1, and 3 is negative 3 plus 12 is 9. 1, 2, and 3 is negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. The 2, 1, and 3 is negative 6 plus 24, that is 18. Then the 2, 2, and 3 is negative 24 plus 4, that's negative 20. Hence, AB is really equal to AC, but B is not the same as C. Another property of real numbers which does not hold for matrices is this property. Recall that for real numbers, if the product of two numbers is equal to zero, then that means at least one of them is equal to zero. For matrices, it is possible that the product AB is equal to zero. However, both A and B are not equal to zero. Let us look at an example. Suppose we have these two matrices A and B. A and B clearly are non-zero. Let us compute the product AB. The 1, 1, and 3 is 0. 2, 1, and 3 is 0 also, right? This times this is 0. And then 2, 2, and 3. You always have a 0. 2, 2 is also 0. The product AB is the 0 matrix, but A and B are not equal to 0. Let us take a look at another special matrix. This is the identity matrix. The identity matrix is simply a square matrix with 1s on the main diagonal and zeros elsewhere, meaning to say, you just have, it will look like this. You have ones on the main diagonals and zeros everywhere. Here are some examples of identity matrices. We denote this identity matrix by I3 and this is the identity matrix 
i2. So in general, if you have a square matrix of size n or n by n, then the identity matrix is denoted by i n. However, if you do not need to denote the size, we simply write it as i. What is the importance of this identity matrix? Let us consider this example. I have here a 2 by 3 matrix and i3. Take note that the product is defined because we have 2 by 3 and this is 3 by 3. So hence the product is a 2 by 3 matrix. Let us look at the first column. Recall that to get the first column, it's just this times this. So what happens is that this multiplied by this, only a11 will be there. And then for the second row, times the first column, we just have a21. And then similarly, for the second column, what will happen there when you multiply this by this, only the second entries will be there. So we have A12 times A22. And lastly, for the third column, only the third, the entries in the third column will appear. So hence, we have this. Now, similarly, if we multiply I2 with this one, with this matrix A, this is 2 by 2, and this is 2 by 3. So the answer will be a 2 by 3 matrix. What do you think will it be? The answer will be the matrix itself. What have we seen here? We have seen that A times I3 for this example is equal to A, and i2 times a is also equal to a. Now, in general, this property is true for any matrices. So, that is a property. So, number one, if a is a matrix of size m by n, a times the identity matrix of dimension n is equal to itself, and identity matrix times a is equal to a. Take note that we only have the subscripts here, because we want the matrix multiplication to be defined. What is the role of this identity matrix? Take note that this one has a corresponding version for real numbers. For any real number A multiplied by 1 is equal to A. And 1 times a real number A is equal to A. So hence... The identity matrix play the role of the real number 1. Let us also look at matrix exponents. For real numbers, we know that we have a to the 0, any number raised to 0 is 1, and a raised to k is equal to the product of a with itself k times. This is also true for matrices. We can define a matrix raised to 0 to be equal to the identity matrix and a matrix raised to k will be equal to the matrix A multiplied to itself k times. And take note that we can only do matrix exponents for square matrices. To make sure that matrix multiplication will be defined. Note that just like with real numbers, we have these properties. If we multiply aj times ak, the exponents gets added. And when you raise a power of a matrix to another power, you simply multiply the exponents. Now that we were able to define matrix exponents, we can now compute such things, a squared plus 3a, where a is a matrix. First, let us compute a squared.
first row times first column is 4 minus 1. That is 3. First row times second column is 2. Second row times first column is negative 2. And then 2, 2, and 3 is negative 1. Of course, 3a, that's a scalar multiple. We just multiply all the entries by 3. So we get 6, 3, negative 3, 0. Therefore, a squared plus 3a is equal to Three plus six is nine. Two plus three is five. Negative two plus negative three is negative five. Negative one plus zero is negative one. Let us recall the definition of matrix transpose. Recall that for matrix transpose, what's happening there? We are simply interchanging the rows and the columns of A. For these two matrices A and B, let us calculate the following. Let's start with the transpose of AB. First, we have AB. Let's compute AB first. 1, 0, 2, 1. 0, 1. 2, 0. AB is equal to, this is 0. 1, 2, 2. Therefore, A, B transpose is equal to 0, 1, 2, 2. Next, let us compute for A transpose, B transpose. A transpose, B transpose is, A transpose is 1, 0, 2, 1. B transpose is 0, 1, 2, 0. This is equal to, this is 2. We have 2. And then 1. And 0. Lastly, let's compute for B transpose, A transpose. B transpose is 0, 1, 2, 0. So we have 0. We have 0 plus 2, that's 2. This is 1. And lastly, we have 2. Observe here that AB transpose is the same as B transpose, A transpose. But it is not equal to A transpose, B transpose. Now, in general, it is true that the transpose of AB is the same as B transpose, A transpose. Meaning to say, you can distribute the transpose but the order reverses. Understand? You simply cannot distribute the transpose there. You have to change the, you have to reverse the order. So here are more properties of matrix transpose. So first, the transpose of the transpose of a matrix is equal to itself. Next, how do we get the transpose of a sum? For the transpose of the sum, you can simply distribute the transpose. And take note that you can also write this as B transpose, A transpose. It doesn't matter because matrix addition is commutative. And then, how do we get the transpose of a scalar multiple? You simply pull out the C. And then you get the transpose of the matrix. Next, this is what we already saw in the previous example. 
the transpose of a product is equal to the transpose of the factors where the order is reversed. That ends our discussion of matrix operations.